Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through a scenario where you can actually utilize small multiples but still have one of those small multiples, so to speak, actually include a grand total into the visual. So like you can see here, we have the thing at the top actually representing the total amount for all of the breakout categories below this in the small multiples itself. Now, this was accomplished using a bit of power query and creating a custom table to allow for this, since natively, small multiples don't actually support any toggle to simply show grand total, but I'm still going to show a dynamic way to do this that will also automatically update as any of the categories or keys change within the model itself. So, let's go and hop into Power BI and get started. For this video, I'm using the ribbon chart as an example to show three small multiples for grand total, for high profit, and for low profit as well. And you can see that over here, there is a column called group that is being used to break out the small multiples themselves. And that is coming from a small multiple grand total table that I have into the model. So let's take a look at the model relationships and then the tables and then see how I configure this. So to start with, we're going to come over to the model view and you can see that I have a product table that has two items in here. We have, going all the way down, category, subcategory, and a hierarchy related to those. And this is key to another table called the small multiples grand total table. Expanding that out, there we go. It has key and group, and it is keyed based off of this with a many to many with the relationship direction pushing from the small multiple grand total down to the product. So let's take a look at each of these tables and the data contained within. So starting to look at the product First, we can see that I have a subcategory for my product and a category that I've defined for this example just between high and low profit. And that has a corresponding key of one and two. So there are two total keys in this example. And that column right here is being keyed to my small multiple table with this key column over here as well. Now notice that I have original rows for high profit with a key of one and low profit with the key of two, but I also have artificial rows created for a label of grand total that contains all of the keys related to anything coming from that product table. And I used Power Query to build this. So in this example, I only have two group categories of high and low, but this table would continue to build out if I had three, five, 15, or 50. So I wanna show you the Power Query as well that allows me to create this, essentially creating artificial rows for grand total that contains all of the keys needed to be able to link back to display the grand total data in a small multiple example. So coming back up to the query editor, and we are going to start from our product table. Now what I did is I used the reference function like I do with a lot of other queries to build a new table on top of this, and that is my small multiples grand total table. So that first step, as you can see, is a reference to the product table here. So I start from that, I then come down under my applied steps and I remove the other columns, and I remove the duplicate. So now I am left with a unique column for category and the key. Now here's where the dynamic magic comes into play. I duplicate that key column, and then what I did is I unpivoted them. So I essentially selected both of these columns here, I right clicked, and I selected unpivot. So what that does is that gives me two new rows for whatever was in this original column. So watch this, unpivot, I get copies of that, with new rows for it. So if I had had two or three or four of these IDs, it would have continuously added those as an additional row into here. And we will see that in a second, but let's first walk through the rest of this, and then I'll show you how this is flexible when my data changes. So I then created a new column, and let's take a look at the logic in here. Basically, I just simply said, if my attribute column contains the word copy, so for either of these rows, flag it as grand total. Otherwise, return the original category value. So it's grabbing the high profit, low profit from my original category value. I did that, I removed the other columns, and now I'm left with a key and a group. So I have two values into here today. Let's just see what happens as an example if I happen to have three. So I'm gonna come into here. I'm just gonna temporarily edit my product table. Again, this is just demo data, but uh, I'm just gonna name this one medium profit. Give that a label of two and these a category key of three. So now I have three labels, three keys instead of two. So I'm gonna come back to my small multiples, grand total table. There we go. You can now see I have high, medium, and low, and still the grand total. So it's still been able to connect to whatever that source was. And as I remove, remove the duplicates, 
duplicate that column, I still get three values instead of two, which means I unpivot to three new rows, which still lets me add the group and remove others. So this way, I don't have to do any maintenance. As my product table changes over time, this will automatically update to always give me those new grand total rows. So it's able to continuously do that. And I'm, I'm gonna close and load this, and let's see the result that we have into here. And in that case, it actually does add the additional category in the small multiples. So it will allow us to move and shift with that in time. So it's a great way to implement this while reducing the maintenance cost of the model as the data from the databases change. But overall, looking at it from this perspective, it's a nice way to be able to essentially see the subtotals with at least just these two categories for now, plus the grand total at the top. So for those individuals who might want to see subtotal data plus total, this is a nice way to have a single visual that does all three instead of potentially having to use two other visuals. And hopefully this is something you found useful. Again, with a lot of these videos, comments, suggestions, or anything else, please feel free to drop that into the comment section down below. I always like to see how people might be able to integrate this, and hopefully this is something you have found useful. Otherwise, don't forget to check out some of our videos over here on the upper left for related content. And always, if you liked the video, please feel free to share, like, or subscribe to the channel. It helps us continue to grow. And thank you again so much for watching this. So one of the reasons that I continue to do these is I love the community involvement. So with that being said, I will see you in my next video.